Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, July 7th, 2016. Here's a quick look what's coming up. Tonight. Following FBI Director James Comey's announcement that Hillary will not be prosecuted, House and Senate Republicans shut down a Clinton investigation. After that, Governor Jerry Brown attacks the Second Amendment by coming after magazines. And while boatloads of migrants illegally enter the United States, wildlife patrolmen disarm and detain American reporters. That's next. Yeah, we've been told we can't go back down around the border. Anything that's considered a wildlife refuge. Yeah, they gave us tr criminal trespass and we had to pay. We were extorted, had to pay $690 to get our firearms back. We were extorted. I mean, that's plain and clear. How many times have you heard liberals say, nobody's going to take your guns, right? In fact, they're always quick to point out that Obama's eight year tenure in the White House is almost over. And so far, nobody's kicked down your doors and confiscated your firearms. In fact, it was Obama himself who has told us several times, we got nothing to worry about. When y'all go home and you're talking to your buddies and they say, ah, oh, he wants to take my gun away. You've heard it here, I'm on television, so everybody knows it. I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in people's lawful right to bear arms. I will not take your shotgun away. I will not take your rifle away. I won't take your handgun away. The notion that I or Hillary or Democrats or whoever you want to choose are hell-bent on taking away folks' guns is just not true. Contrary to claims of some presidential candidates apparently before this meeting, <laughs> this is not a plot to... Uh, Take away everybody's guns. You pass a background check, you purchase a firearm. Well, there you go. You heard the president. Nobody wants to take your guns. They just want to make you register them and restrict transfers. And they only want to ban certain kinds of guns, not all of them, just certain kinds, like what they call assault weapons, for example. They don't want you to have those. And they don't want you to have magazines with more than 10 rounds. They want to limit that. And come to think of it, they're trying real hard to prevent you from carrying a gun. They don't want you to have a gun on you personally. They want gun-free zones where you are basically left defenseless. And they want to ban or limit certain types of ammo. And they want all ammunition purchases registered and cataloged by the Department of Justice. They also want mandatory psychological evaluations before you are allowed to purchase a gun. And if they catch you violating any of these made up rules, they wanna throw you in prison, at which point they will come and take your guns. If you can't see the irony in having a gun ban enforced by men with guns, well, then you fail to understand why the Second Amendment was written in the first place. Throughout history, only slaves are disarmed. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. For all of you actors out there who go to your red carpet events surrounded by full battle rattle SWAT teams while you accept your awards for your latest violent movie, for all you politicians who spend your nine to five days scheming up ways to take away my second amendment rights. Meanwhile, you have first responders on site there to protect you. I say this, come and take it. There is one distinction in history above all others that marks free individuals, free populations, free nations from that of captive slaves. And it's also important to note that throughout history, most nations have been enslaved to an elite. But if you go back to the ancient Greeks, the cradle of democracy, 480 
BC, we see the Battle of Thermopylae at the Hot Gates. It's been popularized in many Hollywood movies where 300 Spartans stood against hundreds of thousands of Persians. Now, if you went back to Persia, none of their general population or their empire were allowed to be armed. They were slaves. Only the king and his military were allowed to be armed. And those 300 that stood against that will live on forever. Then if you accelerate to 1775 and Lexington and Concord and the attempts by the British Crown to disarm the colonists, we see a repeat of what happened with the 300 back in ancient Greece at the Hot Gates fighting the Persians. If we move forward to 1835 in Gonzales, Texas, Santa Ana came to disarm the Mexican citizens of their firearms and the people again fought back. If we look at what the Soviets did in Russia or the Maoist communists in China or what Fidel Castro did or what Hitler did, they always seek, be they communist, fascist, it doesn't matter, to disarm the people before they enslave them. And that's why it's important to reflect as the greatest assault on the right to keep and bear arms in our history takes place, that this historic battle isn't just an American battle, it's a battle fought by all peoples around the world. Only Switzerland and a few other countries still have some form of right to self-defense. And it's important to note, as we see the right to self-defense being taken away, we also see the right of free speech being taken away, the other mark of a free individual. So I thought today we'd look back on some of the famous historic quotes dealing with the Second Amendment. First, I want to give you a quote from Senator Dianne Feinstein, who famously said that if she could get the votes for an outright ban, picking up every one of them. Mr. and Mrs. America. Mr. and Mrs. America. Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. I would have done it. I would have done it. She would vote to ban our guns. We need to do this every day of the week. We need to brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. And remember, this is somebody to this day guarded, even though he's retired, by taxpayer-funded armed guards. It is so incredibly arrogant. They get bitter. They cling to guns, our religion, our antipathy towards people that aren't like them. Barack Hussein Obama. From my cold, dead hands. From my cold, dead hands. From my cold, dead hands. Charlton Heston. The right to defend one's person and one's home when attacked has been guaranteed through the ages by common law. Martin Luther King Jr. They've denied for so long they're coming for our guns. Now they admit they A nation of sheep will be ruled by wolves. Because holding a gun makes me a real feminist. Come and take it. Battle of Gonzales, Texas, 1835. Molon Labe, King Leonidas at the Battle of Thermopylae. This is the big assault, ladies and gentlemen. So now it's time to use the First Amendment to defend the Second Amendment. If you think gun control is going to change the terrorist point of view, I think you're like out of your mind. I think you're like, I think anybody is. I think, I think it's absolutely insane. I have a strict gun control policy. If there's a gun around, I want to control it. Clint Eastwood. Go ahead, make my day. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people. The right of the people. The right of the people. To keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The Second Amendment. Everybody knows that you either use a right or you lose it. And we're using the First Amendment to defend the Second Amendment. Now, our last big push was with the Hillary for Prison shirts, and it became a national meme, and it's had an incredible effect, and has brought so many patriots together. I want to do the same with this Come and Take It shirt. We're going to have a whole bunch of different varieties coming out. This Texas version is the first of a group of limited editions. We've got one with the classic Canon and one with the classic modern M4. And on the back, it says, don't tread on me, Infowars.com. This shirt is an absolute must have. It's athletic cut and it's got this incredibly uh, soft contouring uh, fabric that everybody in the office loves. Support the Info War, support the Second Amendment, support the First Amendment, and meet like-minded people today by getting your Come and Take It limited edition shirt at InfoWarsStore.com. Dads demand guns because it's me that's got to get up and go check out that noise at 2 a.m. Well, I tell you what, the founding fathers would not be very happy with the political climate in America today. And how's this for a difference in opinion? 
This is a quote from Hillary Clinton just last year when she said, I will get the NRA shut down for good if I become president. If we can ban handguns, we will do it. And if you compare that to, let's say, George Washington, it is night and day. Our first president said, when the government takes away a citizen's right to bear arms, it then becomes the citizen's duty to take away the government's right to govern. That's right, and we got a lot of work to do because, believe me, the government is cracking down, and there is a big push for gun control. I mean, just look at what's going on in California. Governor Jerry Brown says he's coming for your high-capacity magazines, and he just signed off on what might be the most draconian gun control laws in the country. SB 1446 says any person who possesses a large capacity magazine, that's 10 or more rounds, they must dispose of that magazine. They want you to surrender your magazines to law enforcement, or you can personally destroy them yourself or ship them out of the state. The point is you are no longer allowed to have magazines with more than 10 rounds of ammo. And that means literally hundreds of thousands of magazines that were previously legal have now become contraband. And Jakari, it gets worse, am I right? I mean, do you think this worse. is worse than Chicago? I mean, this is some of the worst I've ever seen. Well, when you talk about the, the gun laws that are in Chicago, they have changed a bit, but they're still not good. They definitely do have some of the strictest gun control in the country. But this is what is known as backdoor gun control. Yep. The, the way that they're coming after it, they understand that every time there's a mass shooting, people go out and buy record numbers of AR-15s, AK-47s, even though they keep telling you that nobody wants these guns, everybody wants to ban these guns. And I talk about that with uh, Michael Cargill in the video coming up. But when you look at this, uh, they're saying that they're going to come after your magazines. And to be very clear, these are not high capacity magazines. These are standard capacity magazines. Yes. Yeah. When you go buy an AR-15, AK-47 may, may come with a, a 20 round, a 30 round magazine. That's not high capacity. That's just another one of these buzzwords, uh, buzz phrases that the left comes up with to uh, scare you into thinking about these uh, guns in a vastly different way to uh, quote our former attorney general. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. I want to take a look at some of the new rules in California. Ammo sales by mail order or internet purchases outlawed. Ridiculous. Right? Transport of ammo from out of state ban. And we're talking about they want permanent registration cards. So you have to go through a background check mm -hmm. just to purchase a box of ammo. And this is, they're going to permanently track, trace, and register all ammo purchases with the Department of Justice. Well, the thing about this is, Darren, we've always heard this argument that we don't keep track of your purchases. There is no registry. While they, what they're saying right here, they're going to make a registry. Yep. They, they said, you, you paranoid uh, gun conspiracy theorists think everybody knows you have a gun. Nobody has a record. We destroy your record. You're saying you want to create a record of the people who have these, uh, th these things in their home. And it's not illegal in and of itself to own ammunition or a firearm or, you know, to carry it in your vehicle. You know, different states have different laws and definitely check your law so you can be uh, compliant with that. But they're just trying to make the most mundane activity illegal, as we saw in places like New York, the New York Safe Act saying if you have a particular style of buttstock, that now makes it an illegal weapon. These are cosmetic features that have nothing to do with the way the firearm functions. It's just a way to, uh, like I said, backdoor. And regulate everything regulate. to death. Yes. And here's another thing that's going on in California. You cannot loan your firearm to anybody except for immediate family members. If you were to loan it to, if, I, if we lived in California, I wanted to loan you my gun. The only way we could do it, we'd have to go through a bunch of red tape. We'd have to uh, send a letter and, and, and something to the government to, so that they're getting their okay. We have to get the government's approval. <laughs> I, I'm just not one of these people who thinks the government should regulate every part of my life. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm a legal gun owner. I even have a concealed carry. Yeah, a lot of people make the argument for constitutional carry, but mm -hmm. I went that extra step and got it. I'm yep. not breaking any laws. If I want to own a firearm, if I want to go to the gun range and have uh, McBreen or Biggs or whoever else, shoot my firearm, I should be allowed to do that without 
the nanny state coming in and telling me how many rounds I can have in my magazine, what type of firearm I can have. Uh, and I hear this, this argument all the time, McBreen, that uh, why do you want an AK-47? Why do you want an AR-15? You can't hunt with it. Says the person who knows nothing about firearms. There is this thing on the gun called select fire where you can pull the trigger one time and get one bullet. I understand you probably don't want a uh, fully automatic AK to go deer hunting. That's not well, exactly and, and I'm not worried about the deer turning against us. No. Right? So let's look at Chicago, for example. Obama's hometown is number one in shootings and murders. And up until now, it had the number one toughest gun control laws in the country. So, hey, Obama, I'll let you in on a little secret. Criminals don't obey gun laws. Well, we see every holiday weekend, especially 4th of July weekend, uh, I'm sure it's the same if you look it up this year, massive numbers oh, of yeah. shootings. Yep. And uh, the place is supposed to have gun, be a, a giant gun-free zone. They say, well, the reason why we have so many shootings in Chicago is because people get their guns from other areas. Okay, well, other areas where they get, they're getting these guns, they have the same number of fatalities that Chicago has. No, it's a ridiculous argument. You have criminals who, lo and behold, don't respect and understand the law and they choose to go about that that's why i believe the average american citizen should have the right and does have the right to be armed yeah well, it's our god-given right and by the way those shootings in chicago not one of the shooters was a member of the nra tell us what's coming up with the interview with michael cargill okay so i wanted to talk to michael cargill he's been on our show before of central texas gunworks a local gun shop here in austin and we talked about the things we were just discussing uh governor brown and the things that are going on in California, as well as many other things that are happening in our nation that we definitely think that you need to know about. And if you think it's going to stop in California, think again, because they are coming for you. Jakari Jackson here for Infowars.com. There's been a lot of recent developments in the world of the Second Amendment, so we came here to Central Texas Gunworks to talk to Michael Cargill. Now, Mike, uh, there's been a lot of things going on. Let's first talk about the things that's going on in California. So we saw recently uh, Governor Brown trying to push through a few bills. Can you tell us about uh, the changes Californians can expect? Correct. So now in the state of California, the your California is going to be able to track your ammunition purchases. So it doesn't matter how many am, how much ammunition you purchase, you're going to have to notify the DOJ and now the government's going to know exactly what you're doing. And also, uh, High capacity magazines, anything that's over 10 rounds are now prohibited in the state of California. You're going to have to destroy them. Uh, so California has gone the other direction when it comes to gun rights. Right. So are any of these measures that you just mentioned, in your opinion, constitutional? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, what concerns me now is that now we got to look toward the Supreme Court because these cases are eventually going to go to Supreme Court. And now we have a problem with who's going to be the next president, who's going to appoint that Supreme Court justice. So people need to consider, you know, who you're going to vote for when it comes to this current election um, and what that's how that's going to affect us here in this nation as far as our Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Now, with the candidates remaining in the presidential race, do you see any of them as a friend of the Second Amendment? Uh, yes, um, I do see uh, Donald Trump as being someone that's going to support the Second Amendment. Um, Hillary Clinton, I'm sorry, no, she's not going to support the Second Amendment at all. Uh, you can look at, look at the things that she said. Um, so we're definitely going to have a serious problem. She's going to come in and do just as much, if not worse, as the current president that we have. Now, Mike, maybe you can explain this to me. You own your shop here. After every mass shooting, we always hear, you know, the talking heads that come out and say more, Americans want gun control. Americans want gun control. Meanwhile, I'm sure you see a spike after almost every mass shooting. People come in here by record numbers of firearms, you know, AK-47s, AR-15s. Do you have any idea of why that is? Every time there's any type of mass shooting, what happens is people are concerned about their Second Amendment rights. They're concerned about their personal protection. So the... The media or some people want you to believe that the nation wants more gun control, but then their actions say something else. Because whenever there's a shooting, people flock into the gun stores. We just had that recent incident or in Orlando. Mm -hmm. uh, now you have the people in the LGBT community coming in and getting their handgun license. They're getting they're purchasing a gun because they're concerned about their personal protection. What we need to do is get rid of these no gun zones. So are you a supporter of the, uh, the campus carry? Absolutely. I support campus carry. I support carrying everywhere. Uh, if, you know, there should be no reason why we should have any no gun zones at all. We should be able to carry in bars, should be able to carry in schools, should be able to carry in, you know, everywhere. Get rid of the no gun zones if we really truly care about saving lives. All right. 
Now, now briefly, you'll touch on some local news here. Uh, we were talking a little bit ago about uh, the situation going on at City Hall. They have a nice big uh, no-gun sign on the front door, but uh, that could be changing here pretty soon? Absolutely. Um, what we've done here in the state of Texas, um, you have a lot of different state and city municipalities are violating this, the law. For over 20 years, the city of Austin and other cities have also been violating the state law and prohibiting license holders from carrying inside the building. Uh, now, what we've done is in September the 1st, 2015, we had a new law that went into effect that says that, hey, a regular citizen can file a complaint against that city agency or state agency for violating the law. And that's what I've done. So I filed a complaint with the Texas Attorney General's office and they ruled on my side. The city of Austin has got to take down that no gun zone sign, that no gun sign, and allow license holders to carry inside that building. All right. Thank you so much, Michael Cargill, Central Texas Gunworks. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Dads demand guns because it's me that's got to get up and go check out that noise at 2 a.m. You know, Australia is a good example. Canada is a good example. The U.K. is a good example. Why? Because each of them had mass killings. Somebody somewhere will comment and say, Obama politicized this issue. Well, this is something we should politicize. I'm not going to carry a gun. I don't want to be involved in the gun fight. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. Go ahead. Make my day. So the notion that gun laws don't work, it's not borne out by the evidence. He says that the Chicago police had a plan over this bloody 4th of July weekend. Nonetheless, as you indicated, Corey, there was uh, a uh, count of casualties that could have been from Afghanistan or Iraq. We'll make it uh, harder for law-abiding citizens and criminals will still get their guns. In many cases, the offenders, uh, felons, uh, some out on parole, some out on bond. We have to respect the tradition in this country of people who want to defend themselves and their family from violence. There are people at high levels in this government who have bodyguards 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The average American does not have that. Mayor Bloomberg, why, why, why can you defend yourself but not... The majority of Americans, I mean, look at, look at the team of security you got. Every day, every school, at every level. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this, and we need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Was this the weapon of choice for a new kind of terrorist? When a five-year-old girl said she and a classmate should shoot each other with bubbles, the school called it a terrorist threat. AK-47s belong in the hands of soldiers, not in the hands of criminals. You know, the right to bear arms is because that's the last form of defense against tyranny. Lay down your arms, you damned rebels! But we don't need the ability to arm ourselves against the army or the police. What kind of a situation in the U.S. would well, you see like that happening? I mean, we've got a lot of constitutionalists and a lot of people that, that stockpile weapons. Discovered that clergy would help the government with potentially their biggest problem, us. To say we're not turning our guns in and we're not running and we're not backing down. If you want them, come and take them. Rallying patriots worldwide in defense of human liberty. It's Alex Jones. You know, with all this talk lately about gun control, it occurred to me that I have yet to see a single politician who can explain to me how they plan to take guns away from the criminal thugs who are out there on the streets right now. Oh, sure, you'll hear plenty of talk about how they plan to take guns away from us, us law-abiding citizens. But if you take guns away from all of us legal gun owners, then the only people that will have guns will be the bad guys. In fact, I'm curious. I want to see a show of hands right now. 
All those for gun control, raise your hands. All right, there's one, two, three, four. Anyone else? Ah, see there, that figures. All the usual suspects. Any questions? Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's at the root of all our problems. It's time to stop submitting to this tyranny. It's time to realize that we're being enslaved. Some of these same vo voices also do their best to gum up the works. They'll warn that tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. Tyranny with a capital T. You should reject these voices. Everything that's been done with torture, rendition, the NDAA, the Patriot Acts 1 and 2, from day one, was focused on the American people, period. That's it. It's always been about erasing the Bill of Rights and Constitution and rolling out NSA spying publicly, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, rolling out torture, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, but it's really for the general public, rolling out total control and the end of any underground free market systems in the name of fighting Al-Qaeda, but really shutting down any type of free commerce. This is all about converting us from a free society to a tyranny with a capital T. What happened? So while we're there, you probably read it. It was in Drudge, who's great, by the way. Drudge is amazing. But the story in Drudge, and big story, it's all over the place now. Guys swimming across, and big bags of stuff, it's drugs, swimming across the river, right? Swimming right across. And they put the drugs, and actually the camera crew, or the reporters, were petrified because they thought they were going to be killed because they're showing this on camera. The guy's carrying bags of stuff. It was drugs. And on that topic of the drugs, it's not just people coming over, but bringing drugs on a general, let's say a month. Uh, what type of drugs do you encounter and what quantities? Uh, the, the most common is marijuana. We see thousands upon thousands of pounds weekly. Um, we do see a lot of cocaine. We see, we're starting to see heroin and meth a lot more. Usually those were reserved for the ports of entry, but now they started running those across the river as well. What happened to today in particular is that the Border Patrol dropped off some, they call them detainees, but right. obviously they're not detained after they drop them off. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally they have tickets or arranged transportation to go somewhere in the interior. Well, today, apparently for some logistical reasons, some of them didn't, hadn't had transportation arranged or their transportation is tomorrow. Right. And so we're having to find places to shelter them for tonight. So we've accessed some resources that we have. We're gonna shelter them here tonight. So uh, why is the Border Patrol bringing them here? They're not bringing them here, they're bringing them to our bus terminal because that's where the Border Patrol understands that they have transportation to go to the interior. Right. So they're dropping them off. It was our understanding that they were dropped off with tickets or with vouchers for tickets. Um, turns out some of them didn't tonight, didn't right. have their ticket or didn't have their voucher, or like I said, their bus is until tomorrow, so they got nowhere to stay. Our bus terminal, by ours, I mean the city of McAllen, mm -hmm. bus terminal is not a 24-7 operation, right. so we've got to put them up somewhere else. So for tonight, we're doing the best we can with this resource, which thankfully one of our neighboring cities right. made available to us, and we're going to put them up here tonight. Tomorrow we'll have a little chat with the Border Patrol and see what's going on. Right. They're supposed to be protecting this border. You mean aiding and abetting. What do you mean specifically? Actually, what's happening is that the uh, federal government is actually completing the smuggling cycle. Uh, by having a parent sending their, their child to the uh, U.S. border and have them, having them smuggled, uh, that is only part of the, of the smuggling cycle. Okay. How long was your journey to get here? It took us two months. We were working and working on the way up until we got here, where we're at. We just want to complete the journey, but we're already tired and thirsty and hungry. Eventually we'll get where we want to go, but it's getting impossible. 
they're tired and hungry. As far as the people coming over, are your agents encountering any type of uh, infectious diseases, people with illnesses as they cross the border? Oh, most definitely. We see tuberculosis pretty regularly, um, scabies. Um, more often than not, we have large amounts of uh, infectious diseases as far as scabies go. And the interesting part with that is it's, it's not actually um, seen on the body during the infectious period. And so these people clear through our system and then they go into the, the rest of the country with that disease. Uh, we see a lot of uh, measles, a lot of chicken pox, um, a lot of unidentified illnesses that, that you know, a lot of uh, lung infections that we have no idea what they are. Talking to what was your name? Alma down there. Alma. Yeah. Alma Garza. Where are you headed? Stout. Okay, so we can't go anywhere in here at all. Okay. All right. Well, we'll stay out of there. Thanks. Because news or journalists. I already told them. Okay. Yes, and they're from Honduras. From Honduras. Mm -hmm. okay. How long have you been traveling? ¿Cuánto tiempo llevan viajando? Un mes? Yeah. A month. A month. Mm -hmm. They've been traveling for a month now. When yeah. did they get into the U.S.? ¿Cuándo llegaron a, la, a los Estados Unidos? Ahorita. Acaban de cruzar. Sí, they just crossed. Well, you know, one in five people that we catch has uh, has some type of criminal history here in the United States. Uh, on top of that, we only catch 40% of what's coming across this actual, in this area. So that's 20% of what we catch are known bad guys. You can only imagine what the other 60% of people that are coming across, who they are or what their plans are, we have no idea. Um, the interesting part is they're not staying here in the Rio Grande Valley. A lot of these folks are using it as a waypoint to move forward, whether it's the people themselves or drugs, it's all going through the area and it's going into larger communities like uh, the San Antonio's, the Austin's, the Dallas, all the way up to Virginia, Maryland, uh, DC, Chicago, they're all headed that way. Last night, and before we know it, two uh, state wildlife fish refugee people or whatever pull up, detain us, and then we had to sit up and wait on another federal agent to come in who is a federal state and wildlife uh, officer. They took my two firearms, my two Springfield 1911s, they took Zimmerman's gun. Springfield XD. A Springfield XD that he had holstered. He has his uh, concealed carry permit and open carry, all that on him. I left mine in the car. And uh, so we're being questioned for being out there. And our whole thing is like, hey man, the police just escorted us out here. And literally they sent us down there and then left and screwed us over. And now the federal agents detained us for, we've been standing out in the freaking sun for the last two hours being questioned about stuff to what? So hot. Yeah. So hot. Oh, it's like 100 degrees outside and like everybody's on the verge of about ready to throw up because we have no water. Luckily, towards the end, at the end of the ordeal, they finally gave us some water. Allie, what was this like? I mean, this is, we go down to the border pretty much every week with some of our crew. I guess your first time down there. Uh, and then all this important news you were gathering and you were operating as an interpreter with a lot of the folks and the board patrols meeting with you, giving you info. And then here comes Obama's fish and wildlife people to grab you and kidnap you guys. What was this like? Well, Alex, it was uh, very new to me for sure. I usually come down to McAllen and do some shopping with my family or something. Super simple. I've never been in the front line. So this was a great experience for me personally, being Mexican and looking at everything that's happening in the border. So. When we first got here to McAllen and we first talked to those uh, um, people who were crossing the border, the Honduran uh, people, and uh, they told us that they just crossed and they seemed uh, scared and something really hap bad happened and stuff. So when I was talking to them in Spanish, they didn't seem like worried that we were there or anything. So that really surprised me first because when they talk about crossing the border, it's always like super dangerous and stuff like that. But I can imagine uh, what they went through before, but coming into him and then just walking in and being picked up by the Border Patrol, it just seemed like they had it easy. And me, I work hard to get to where I am. I'm legally here and everything. And 
I don't know. It's just very surprising. And then the next day, obviously, you want to get more information and take more B-roll and talk to more people. Uh, and we get surprised by this uh, attack that Joe Vicks was uh, talking about. And I, at first, I, I feel safe when I'm around with Michael Zimmerman and Joe Big. They're, they know what they're doing. They've been out on the field. They love what they do. And I felt 100% safe with them. So I had no worries that when these people came in and started telling us to put our hands up uh, in the air, I was not afraid. I was kept calm, relaxed, because the worst thing you can do is obviously confront them. And they well, can sure, you're not in the wrong. They're the ones that are going to get in trouble now. And, and you know, it's a great point. You are have been a college student in RTF. You're you're from Mexico. We just hire folks that are smart and hardworking. We love you. You've been here you know a while, a couple of years, and you know she so you're a great asset to Infowars. They make it so hard for you because we got to jump through some hoops to have people legally that are good, hardworking, smart people here. But then if you just want to wander in from China or Honduras or 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 you know Islamabad or wherever, you just come on in and we load you on a bus and you're into the country. They want to just it's just crazy. Why do you think they're doing that? I feel like when uh, when you're smart or where, when you do the, the things, uh, when you do it right and you go through the protocols to have a visa and stay here in the country, you are under watch. And when people come in illegally, they I feel like they overflow people and uh, they don't know what to do with them. And and Mexicans or Hondurans or uh, illegal aliens come in and they know that they have it good. They don't have to worry about being looked at for five years or they don't have their names on a list being watched. Or, and that's what I feel like is going on right now. It's like I, eyes are on me. I, that's right, because I you're here legally and, and our crew are citizens here legally. You're being treated like crap because you comply. I'm Margaret Hell, Info, Infowars.com. I want to talk to you about robots today, specifically mall cop robots. How would you feel if you went to your local mall and found a 300-pound security robot guarding you, following you around, talking to you, basically like a glorified security camera? Now, these are on the horizon. One of them made its debut this week in China. Now, this K5 300-pound robot that walks the mall and talks to you, it's made by a company called Nightscope. This is what they had to say about the impressive security details that it has. It patrols with a geofenced area using its sensors to alert security professionals of potential threats. Each machine has a 360 degree high def video for both day and night, thermal imaging, two-way audio and public address, an intercom to broadcast just in case you're breaking any mall rules. The robot's going to tell you to stop it. Uh, people detection, just to name a few of its attributes. One of these K5 bots is currently policing a mall here in the States, as well as one in China, making their debut this week, getting us acclimated into robots actually policing us. Now, no word yet on if these robots have developed an employee union, if they're receiving benefits, if they lose power, if they misbehave or commit some sort of work infraction. But what we do know is they're being employed in malls. They're hitting now this week from a company called Nightscope. Now, these robots, they have no organic matter in them. They're not human. They, they look lifelike. They talk to you, but they don't actually have any human material in them. There's a company called BAE, and they're making an unmanned aerial drone, a military drone, out of organic matter. Now, this is coming out of engineers from the University of Glasgow. And these unmanned aerial drones, they're made up of organic matter grown in large-scale chemistry labs. Now, they're making these drones from the molecular level up. They're using uh, something called a chemputer. It's, it looks like chemistry and computer, computer, the word combined. And it's going to be able to enable a chemical process to grow aircraft uh, through some of their most complex electronic systems. You heard me correctly, we're talking about a piece of electronic equipment with organic matter that's actually growing it. Now these new organic drones, they're gonna be flying at a pace that would allow them to outperform um, any adversary, any adversary missile. And we're talking about military drones that would in fact be targeting people. So machines that are part organic would be killing people in a battlefield instead of uh, sending soldiers out. That's the ultimate goal of BAE, their systems developing this human-like drone. Now speaking of human-like projects, step this up, uh, taking robotics to childbirth for a moment. Now there's a process that was developed called ectogenesis. It's the growth of an organism outside of someone's body, namely an unborn baby growing in what, what looks basically like a lab jar. Now these artificial wombs, as they're calling them, uh, will need an artificial uterus that supplies nutrients and oxygen to an unborn baby, and it's custom-built amniotic fluid 
sacs. We'll also need to be removing waste. So they're, they're, they're growing babies in lab jars, taking this a step further. And they're, they're doing this with a placenta machine. Uh, these cables and monitors, they, they uh, look into the baby's heart rate, weight, and development, all as it grows outside of a woman's body. And, and this technology, it's removing the need for a surrogate. That's, that's what they're claiming they're doing this, that women are not going to be needing a surrogate anymore. If women, if women can't use their own bodies for whatever reason, we've got a lab that can grow you on in a lab jar, and this is how we're going to do it with these bioengineered babies through this process. Now, the scientists that developed this process, um, they've been looking at, at this since 2001, and uh, these previous experiments, they were growing mouse embryos in wombs attached to placenta machines, but they've taken it up a step further, and now they're developing human embryos in these machines. This technology, they say, it's going to be ready to use in 20 years widely available in 30 years, and the, the technology experts are saying that uh, more than a third of babies in the next 70 years will be born this way. If that's not troubling, I don't know what is. Human trials are being delayed for now, but that's where they're headed with these lab-grown babies. You don't even have to have a baby anymore if you don't want to. You can just pay a scientist to have one for you. While some robots are creating life, others are destroying it. I'm talking about Tesla, and they've experienced their first death by a self-driving car, a robotic car, uh, coming out of Florida. A man named Joshua Brown, 40 years old, behind the wheel of a self-driving Tesla Model S car that was driving him around so he could watch Harry Potter. It actually decapitated him when the vehicle collided with a trailer truck and killed him. The car assumed it was going under a bridge. It actually went under a tractor trailer and decapitated Brown as he was watching his movie. And this is the first known death that we've had from a self-driving vehicle. Now, Tesla is saying that it would be impossible to watch a digital movie while the car was driving, that the autopilot was activated. It suggests that um, autopilot is safer than the average vehicle, that people really can't be trusted to drive their own cars, and that these automated cars are going to eliminate deaths. This is just a mechanical failure of sorts, a rarity, the first known death that we've had from a robot driving a car. We see the rise of machines and technology just wanting to make our lives more convenient, safer, using drones with organic matter so that people don't have to do the killing, having babies outside of wombs so women don't actually have to carry their own children, and you don't even have to drive yourself. But with all this new technology and convenience, what exactly are we giving up? Well, now in other news, a typhoon is headed for Taiwan. Category 5 storm, 200 mile per hour winds, one of the heaviest storms um, the world has seen this year so far. We're talking about a massive typhoon. They're naming it Napartok, which means warrior in Micronesian. It's the third storm this year to reach a Category 5 with wind gust inside the typhoon that's been recorded to reach up the 201. Now, this is going to hit late Thursday evening, our time, early Friday morning, their time. And it's already churned huge waves and heavy winds on, on their coastline. Ground fishing boats and commercial ships and planes, they've all been evacuated. Nobody's going into Taiwan. Nobody's going out. Now, Red Cross volunteers are standing by. We know that people are, are getting ready uh, to experience the after effects of this typhoon. It's also going to hit the Chinese coastline. It's going to pass through hit Taiwan and then head on to the Chinese coastline. Now, they're not going to receive um, the damage that Taiwan is expected to receive. Their wind gusts are only going to reach 115 miles an hour, uh, but the heavy rainfall is likely to call severe flooding, severe death in low-lying areas. In much of the country's southeastern coast, it's already saturated from record amounts of rainfall this year. So typhoon heading for Taiwan, and uh, Red Cross volunteers are standing by, but as of now, everything's been evacuated that can be, and we know that nothing's going in and nothing's going out. They're bracing themselves for this storm to hit. I'm Margaret Hell reporting for InfoWars.com. All right, folks, that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. The InfoWars Nightly News will return, Lord willing, tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock p.m. Central. Don't forget to check out the Alex Jones Show Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central. Have a good night.